Greetings, Dr. Jeffrey Scott here, and this is my weekend market update for the weekend, including Sunday, March 3rd, 2024. Well, we got through February in pretty darn good shape. Um, email address is hgsidoc at gmail.com. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Glad you're here. Please hit subscribe. Hit the alarm. I post these every weekend, but I can't tell you when because it depends on the rest of my life events. Um, if you have any questions, please fill them in in the remarks section in the YouTube video or send it to my email address, which you see right there. Also, at the end, um, I'm going to have in the YouTube um, area under remarks a link for the Wealth365 event. Um, I don't ask for anything for these. I don't charge. Um, I don't sell anything except a couple of indicators, which I don't push very hard. And um, one way you could pay me back is just to click on the link. Hope you get to come to the event. But if not, I appreciate it anyways. That's for the Wealth365. I titled this week Tulip Mania. And I chose that because we are in the midst of just a massive rally. And when you look at some of the instruments, um, some of the biotech with no earnings, um, MicroStrategy, SMCI, which is going to jump again on Monday after it was included in the S&P 500. You wonder if some of these valuations have lost reality. And whenever I start to think that maybe that's the new norm, it reminds me of the second line, second line there, which is it's never different this time. So um, I am still bullish. I think this market still goes higher, which I told the people I emailed during the week. But I am still cautious. And, you know, there's so many people calling for a pullback here. At some point, they're going to be right, but maybe not today. Certainly not today because I'm doing this on a Saturday. So let's take a look at what I see. This is for educational purposes only. Um, anything I say should be taken in the spirit of education and not investment advice. I'm a doctor, not a broker. I have none of the licenses that um, would uh, allow me to tell you what to buy or sell. I'm independent. I'm not affiliated with any software vendors. Um, and I paid for the tools I use and trading involves risk and you alone are solely responsible for any investment decisions you make. Here is um, a, a piece for the Wealth365 event. I think it's a little bit more than 29 days. This one's not until April. Um, they're great programs. You'll have opportunity to buy, to, 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 to get a subscription of Wealth Charts at a lower price that you're going to find. A lot of us will have different offerings always at the best price during the Wealth365 event. No cost to attend and to learn. Uh, if you like these videos, but they're just too long for you, go to stocksanddocs.com. During the week, I'll post something from 5 to 12 minutes, depending, you know, the longer ones when there's something going on in the market, the shorter ones when there's not. Major markets tell a story. And the first thing you'll notice that over the past five days, all you see here is green. That probably tells me something. Um, it tells me a lot, actually. And so that's something I think is important. Look at Bitcoin, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust up 23%. Look at the Russell leading the major indices up 3%. Um, oil was up over 4 That's not good. Arc Innovation was up 56 And the IBD 50, 4.3. Small cap and growth. Small cap and growth. You could see Friday was a strong day. Um, as well. And gold had a big breakout on Friday that we'll look at as well. Hard to be bearish when you see things that look like this. But, you know, we are stretched, at least on a lot of the names that are leading. If we look at the Q Edge tool, you could see that we, two thirds of the stocks in the S&P 1500 are above their Bollinger Band. That's very bullish, but not too bullish. 12% are above their band, um, not too stretched that you have to rebound. You could certainly see more stocks at the upper part of their bands, which is bullish. If we look at Friday, 73% of the sectors were up, 72% of the industries, and 60% of the stocks. So a bullish day. If we look over five days, the numbers are almost identical. And if we look at over a month, 
again, almost identical. So we have been in the midst of a very strong market. Um, hope your portfolio reflects it. If we look at the Q market breadth tool, the reason for concern that I have had is if you look at the left, you get a sense that even after the market had sold off quite a bit, this is August of 23, when you start getting confirmed Hindenburg omens, that the markets usually go lower. When you get bangos, which is the blue arrow, you don't have to have a big drop, but typically you're stretched and you're going to pause to refresh. Well, right now we have hindis and we have bangos all over the place. Those are things that suggest to me that there's still a risk to the downside. No surprise to anyone. And when you break out and look at just the NASDAQ on the left and the NYSE on the right, you could see that the bangos are firing almost daily or weekly on the NYSE and um, the Hindenburgs are on both. You'll also notice that although the NASDAQ and the NYSE are either at or near all-time highs, when you start to look at breadth, stocks above 50, stocks above 200, 50 above 200, they're all well off their highs. So there's a divergence that remains there. This is the Nick Drendel tool. It's one of my heads up displays that I use during the week. And you can see, uh, this does not, is this Friday? Yeah, this is Friday. You can see Friday, the performance here, the Q's had a strong day, IWO, the rest finishing in the upper part of their closing ranges. And notice, again, we had strong sessions, biotech, semis. On the week, crypto was extremely strong. Um, biotech on the five days was up 7.2. Crypto was up 9.3. And we've sort of gotten rid of those new low issues. Rates eased as the market seemed to like the PCE. You could see the white 10-year and 30-year down, S&P in yellow up. Recession in our near future, there's always a recession. This is a gray bar that shows how frequent they occur. Not that frequently. Last one in 2020. And if you look down here, you could see our industrial production, according to the Philadelphia Diffusion Index, is above zero. You don't get recessions when you're above zero. The gray bars were before we got above zero. And we're not seeing any credit tightness. So the only concerning thing here to me is the 10 minus 2, which approaches from time to time the, in, the reverting back to normal on the yield curve. Usually a recession follows that move. Um, how do you get that move? Either the Fed has to cut the short term because the economy is sucking, therefore inflation is not a surprise, or the market starts increasing the long term. Um, hopefully not, you know, hopefully the latter isn't happening. So will we get a recession? Sure, I bet we get one but I bet we get one after the inauguration in 2025. Breath improved as the rally brought in, stocks above the 200, stocks above the 40, the 21.21 new high, new low over 13 weeks, all increased as the indexes went higher. None of them are in nosebleed territory. The AD lines, whether you look at the NYSE, the NASDAQ 100, the Russell 1000, and these are all lockstep. The Russell 2000 looks like perhaps the AD line in yellow is going to try and catch up to price. But you could see in the broader NASDAQ, even though I believe it hit an all-time high on Friday, um, that there's still a lot of work to be done on the breath. Current buckets, as I said, two-thirds are above the midline. More stocks are above, but not anything that says we have a reversal. Hindi free zone, interesting. The new lows are pretty low, but look at the new highs, 10% on the NASDAQ. If I go back to November, it got to 11 twice and it came back. Got to 11, it came back. 13 and it came back. The coming back is because the market reverted to its mean. So at some point, we're going to get too, too many new highs and the market's going to back off. 15% is a pretty big number. That's what we're seeing on the NYSE common. This certainly last week was a growth lover's market. Every Friday night, I prepare a large number of watch lists, including my holdings, which had a crazy week, 
my buy watch list, which had a crazy watch list, and then a lot of publish lists. For example, um, if you want to think about growth stocks, you might think about the IBD 50 or the Market Smith 250 or 300, whatever they're calling it at a given time. So here's the weekend review was up 3.19 from IBD. Here's the Market Smith up 2.5 on the week. IBD 50 was up 2%. And the S&P 500 was only up 1%. So clearly it was growth. Why did I have outperformance? Well, if you listen to my weekday videos, you'll know because I'm heavy crypto related and heavy biotech. Not to say I didn't take profits along the way. If you look over here, I'm looking at market performance, percent gain versus ERG. And ERG is combining EPS rank plus relative strength rank plus group rank. And if you're a growth lover like I am, you want to see a curve that looks like this. Higher ERG, higher performance. Now, you throw out the tail in the head because the numbers are low, but even in the heart of this, it is definitely favoring growth. So stocks with earnings beat those that did not. High relative strengths outperformed, and stocks that started the week in good groups outperformed. That is my favorite possible week. And because I'm a top-down guy, so I need the market, but I also need the type of stocks that I buy to be working. News and earnings. So if you look on the left, you see all the Fed speakers. On the right, we got some ADP numbers, some jolts, job openings, Federal Base book on Wednesday, claims on Thursday, and the monthly unemployment report or employment report on Friday. It comes out on the 8th this week, year, this month, because the first was a Friday, and typically a Friday is the first day of the month they give it the following Friday. As you can see on the right, we still have plenty of earnings this coming week. And as I say in the lower right-hand corner, it is a judgment call to hold stocks over earnings dates. It is bad judgment to not know when your stock's earnings date is scheduled. There have been some huge moves, but the moves can go up or down based upon the market's response to those earnings. So bottoming is an event, topping a process. I still think we're putting in a top. However, as I mentioned midweek, I still think we go higher. It's possible that despite the bangos, the Hindenburg omens, the divergences, et cetera, that we could blow right through these levels. I think you have to be nimble, but right now this is a market to be long. The stock market traded with cautious price action first half of the week, improved in the second half. NASDAQ composite, fresh all-time high. Last major indice following the S&P 500 and the Dow to reach those. The PCE was accepted well. Gains mostly by mega caps and semiconductors, but small caps actually led 3% on the week. I'm mostly long with some cash. Like many, I've seen outsized positive returns since November, which has accelerated the last couple of weeks. Again, this is education and past performance does not predict the future. I will remain nimble, but have increased my participation. I'm still keeping my stops fairly tight and my position size medium with minimal margin. Earnings season is still in force, and there have been some impressive earnings driven moves, so be aware and careful. And we also get the, quote, benefit of numerous talking Fed heads this week, which could cause some volatility. Again, hope to see you at the Wealth 365. Uh, please, please, please register. That would be so great for me because they let me do this for reasons sometimes I wonder because I don't have a mailing list. I'm not a big time educator with websites and all kinds of things to sell. So I don't bring people with. But what I am is one a person that really likes the program and I like to show people how I use wealth charts. All right, on to the charts. All right, I'll get out of that real quick. Save. All right, perfect. So let's go right into wealth charts and let's look at the uh, weekly market timing model. Those who've been around any time know that I'm really looking at two different things. I'm looking at price related to a WMA, and I'm looking at um, my weekly Bongo tool, which is a trending. You could see on these weekly charts that price on the spider is above, Bongo's green. Ditto for the Qs, ditto for the Diamonds, ditto for the Russell. 
And if you look at the NASDAQ itself, you'll see a similar pattern to the Qs, almost identical. What's different this week is we had such a powerful week that we are um, in new territory on Spider, NASDAQ, and Diamonds. Um, just off the high on the Diamonds, fresh high on the NASDAQ and the Spiders. So very impressive market. And even the Russell appears to be starting to break out. But on the daily, which we were mixed at best, we now are in buy signals across all four of these. If we go into the indices, and let's just look at a five-minute bar and get a sense of what happened during the week. So let me just fill in Friday here. Drawing tools, text, text. Pop it right here. I like to look back each day at the last several trading days, and I, I usually use the Friday. Um, excuse me, I, I usually use the five-minute chart to do this analysis. So if we look at the market that we had, and let's see where I put. This line here reflects the close of the prior Friday. And you could see as the week began, we sold off Monday, Tuesday, rallied into the close on Tuesday, broke down on Wednesday a little bit, sideways move until we got the PCE, which was not a surprise. Again, we talked about that last week that the market might just tread water. And we had a big gap up Thursday morning, followed by a return to retest. And then the market just ran up the rest of the week. And you could see closing much higher than the prior week's close with uh, much of the gain, if not all the gain, occurring on Friday, late Thursday and Friday. If we look at the daily charts. Now, last week, midweek, I talked about this little flag that looked like it was being put in. You could draw the same, draw the same thing here on the NASDAQ. In fact, I thought I did. And that it, it almost looked like, uh, that's because it's the wrong one. There we go. And I think I drew it on this one. Let's see. There it is. It looked to me like we were giving little flags and I was looking for a breakout. We broke out on the spiders, the Qs, and the diamonds. That tells me we're likely to go higher. We're also extended, and I know all the reasons, which I mentioned before, of why this market's going to correct. But I don't short all-time highs. And despite a lot of very bearish comments on YouTube, I won't give up my longs and go short until the market actually changes. And right now, strong week, led by growth, all the indices doing well, and even the Russell setting a recent um, high. Um, in fact, probably a closing high that will hold, goes all the way back to when this market died. And this here is... Um, early 2022. So I'm impressed with where we are on the VIX. The weekly VIX was down quite a bit, 4.5%. Quite a bit's a joke. It's such a low number. You could see the daily VIX on Friday was down um, 2%. What I like is the dollars just treading water here, consolidating after running up off of a fall. If I look at commodities, at the dollar's week, you're going to see strong gold and silver. Gold had a had a breakout on uh, up 1.89 on good volume on Friday. Silver also up about 2%. I like gold because it's above the 200. Oil, which has been working its way higher, actually got above $80 a barrel at one point. And natural gas still doing nothing. And then perhaps the other big news of the week was this chart right here which I've been looking at this line, which was prior resistance to hold, and it looks like it's holding. We've come back to the 200 on the 10-year. Dollar doing nothing, 10-year doing nothing. A little nervous about commodity prices and inflation, but um, those are two big supporters of this market going higher. If we look at the hourly sectors to get a sense of what's working, well, here's Bitcoin down here. I actually added this to my charts. And let's duplicate that. And let's make a Bitcoin versus Spider chart. So I'm going to go S, 
PY, and I have to use the one that's in the program, not the tasty, and I want to make a um, ratio chart. So why is it not? Hmm. Ah, because it's not a, never mind, it's not a regular, It's a, I think it's a tasty trade signal, that's why. But you can see the strength of Bitcoin. So looking at the sectors, materials definitely has picked up way off the bottom. Communication starting, energy starting, financials weakened, industrials weakened, technology turned up, defensive staples, real estate, utilities all look weak. Discretionary is picked up. LABU bouncing around at the top, but strong XLV. Um, not so strong. So if I had to pick the most in impressive, it's probably technology here and the materials looks good as well. Scanners. If I go into the heat map, I can see a lot of green. This is the S&P 500 and we know that Friday was a strong day. So I look at the S&P, the Dow, interesting Apple, negative, but the Dow and I think, let's go back real quick. The Dow actually was, let's see. Yeah, the Dow was still up despite that. The Dow was up 0.35. I hope that Nick Drendel wasn't the day before, but either way, the story is the same. Strong, strong markets. All right, so the Dow positive despite Apple being negative. The NASDAQ 100 should look pretty strong, but it's got Apple in it. Here you go. Very strong on the NASDAQ 100. And the leader really was the Russell 2000. And you can just see how strong from a heat map. If I go and look at Wellscanner, what I've done here is I've put in a, a, a group of ETFs that are market sectors, indexes, themes to give me a sense of what is working. Materials comes right to the top. This is relatively new, um, but look at the move it's had over the last couple of weeks. Pretty darn impressive, and we saw that on the hourly charts. The MLPs continue to be strong. U.S. energy, oil producers, here's industrials, genomic biotech, which we looked at on Friday morning, energy, and then retail. But above 800 we're up to six, so that's improvement in strength, and the materials is new. Now, my CAT scanner is a tool that I designed to help me scan the market to find the type of stocks I want to find. I want to buy stocks in uptrends that have pulled back to support and are now getting some type of a momentum signal, but are not so far gone that they're too extended for me to have a decent stop placement because the tighter my stop the bigger the position I can take based upon my trade management rules so I mentioned that materials look good so I have an e a list of stocks in the material sector so let's see if any of them are in a opportunity to buy so let's rank by dots AU angle gold comes up to the top well this is interesting because we talked about how gold was strong and there are many people think that gold is going to break out here. Well, I'm not sure if I'm a big gold bug or not, but I like the fact that we broke above the 200. This triangle means that's the Rob Hoffman launch indicator. Good volume. Momentum, breakouts, volume over the last two days were not extended. Of course not. We're on the 200. And relative strength and OBV look good. So... I could certainly put that into a watch list that I might be interested in. I have no idea what Loma is, so we're going to skip it. Tech is one that, this is an interesting company. Um, they've got coal. they got a bunch of different minerals. Um, they're not doing much right now, um, so I would pass on them. They did have a wealth signal and two dots, so we're going to skip them. Um, builders first source, my God, I don't know how you buy this up here. It's kind of extended. Let's see what the high jump is. Well, high jump's 82. What a beautiful run here. I like this thing on a pullback. 
um, although based upon the high-low jump, it's not too extended. Look at relative strength in OBV. What a beautiful move from you know, 110 up to 199 going back since um, November when the market rally started. Wow. FMC, yeah, kind of a bottom fish. Trex, you know, this is a pattern that I like. This is, you know, they make the outdoor, I think, fake wood or some type of wood for decking. Not extended, relative strength and OBV. Uh, relative strength is okay. Little pullback here. I think that's one I might be watching as well. So I looked at the materials. Last week, I looked at the genomics, and we actually made a, uh, a ETF list. Let's see if I can find them. Let's see if anything here. Let's see. Reginex Bio. That's kind of a choppy-looking stock. Aero Pharmaceuticals. We're seeing a lot of biotech that look like this, that they're starting to break out here. Pullback uptrend, little pullback the day before. Um, not my favorite pattern, but with that launch indicator, it makes me want to pay attention. Rocket Pharmaceuticals. Here's that pattern of uptrend, pullback, sideways move. Vertex, like this one more. Here's the stock, big uptrend, pullback. And this one here had breakout momentum from a squeeze, uh, relative strength and OBV setting up. This is one that I put on my watch list. Care DX, it's already breaking out. Natera, yeah, this is one you would have liked to have been in here when I had three dots and made the list. Now it's had a big move and it's clearly extended. All right. How about semiconductors? We could look at semiconductors. So I've tried to build lists of the various ETF groups that might be interesting. So in the semiconductor list, AVGO, what a beast. What a beast, Broadcom. Um, it's extended, but this thing is in a beautiful uptrend. Big volume move, three dots on Friday, relative strength at OBV look good. Marvell Technology, a big breakout. Here's your uptrend, pullback, and a big move on Friday on volume, gapped up, volume. Interestingly, it doesn't meet the terms for extended. It's coming out of a squeeze. That one looks quite interesting. MRVL, analog devices, ADI. Um, not as impressive as Marvell, but maybe setting up. A lot of these are stocks I looked at. Taiwan Semiconductors, uptrend, pullback, and a breakout on Friday on pretty significant volume. Relative strength at OBV look good. AMD, and let me just talk a little bit about this scan. <coughs> Why would AMD be on the bottom of this list? <coughs> and not at the top with a move like that. It's simple. I am not ordering this list by biggest move. I'm trying to find stocks that are still actionable. And something like Marvell, which had a big move up after a sideways move and a pullback on volume and is at 57 in the high-low jump, might be more actionable than AMD, even though it's had a massive move because the high-low jump is already at a 100%. So it's really based upon the pullbacks and the other characteristics. Skyworks, I think of this as a big Apple supplier. There's an Apple event coming up. This thing looks like it's setting up, coming out of a squeeze, had three dots on Thursday, moved up again on Friday. Is there going to be something with the new iPad Pro that's going to be released at the Apple event that might be good for Skyworks? Typically, that's what drives Skyworks. All right. We might want to look also at the healthcare sector and see if anything comes up to the top. Now, if there's earnings, I'm skipping them because the earnings moves um, are a little bit tougher to play because there's typically a reversion to the mean. I don't know this company, Certera. 
In fact, that it had a couple of analyst upgrades to 20, probably was an earnings move. Let me see if there's anything on this. PT Therapeutics, here is a stock that's been basing for quite some time, had a couple of launch signals come in, and then on Friday took out the 200 on good volume. OBV and RS looks good. That one looked interesting, made my list. ISRG is a beast, but it's got a look how far away it is from the 200. That bothers me, although it's not meeting the criteria. Uptrend, sideways, breakout. That's my favorite pattern. Let's see if anything else. There was a lot that made my list, but a lot of these stocks were extended. Here's one I just don't get. Catalyst Pharma, great fundamentals. Um, this stock used to be a growth darling. And then um, I think somebody came out and said they had a, a generic they were making and the stock sold off hard. The crazy thing was the generic was years away uh, in the 30s, but it was enough to knock the stock out. Well, one thing I like to do is just put a bunch of strong stocks from various lists into one directory. I call it my, my combo buys leader list. And it comes from a lot of sites that you would recognize the name that I pay for the service, a lot of scans that I run myself. And this is usually a nice list to go fish, fishing from. So a lot of these you worry about earnings. So for example, and there used to be a tool in wealth charts that would tell you when they had earnings. I, that's under repair. But Autodesk looks pretty good here, doesn't it? I don't like the red candle, but that red candle was up 2.5%. Big volume. Breakout momentum from a squeeze. It's relative strength and OBV look good. So I will jump here into trading view. And let's look at Autodesk. ADSK. Here's the big move. And let's see. March 2024. 12% earnings growth, a 7% surprise, 14% revenue growth, a 3% surprise. Next earnings are not to May, and you could see the earnings came out the night before. Um, so I will go back and forth for now because I like to see the earnings table and some of the fundamentals. Now, nothing scans like wealth chart scans, and nothing is as good for ranking, although. Um, you know, you can do bits and pieces in other platforms. The reason why I use wealth charts here is because it's all together. Um, I just need that earnings to come back, and it will. I've talked to them a couple of times. Dell, a big earnings move. Um, it's too extended here. I'd like to see it trail a little bit before. Um, for example, Viking Therapeutics. Not that long ago, this thing had a massive move. And my thought was it was going to pull back and go higher. And I think that's exactly what it's doing. And I bet this thing breaks 100 before too long. Um, but after a big move, it should have never surprised you <coughs> to see the market consolidate a bit. And I, as you can see here, I thought it was going to go a lot higher. Tidewater is an oil services company that must have had earnings. Let's take a look. TDW. March earnings, interesting. They missed on earnings, had a big beat on revenue. Next earnings not to May 6th. But the street must have liked it because the earnings came out after hours here. And even though everything was red, a big move. Now, that's where you got to be careful on earnings. You got to win by getting beating the, the number on earnings and revenue, not the published numbers, but the whisper numbers. And then you have to have a positive going forward. You wonder if they said something in their press release about improving going forward. Um, guidance and buyback, all right? That's the reason it wasn't their performance. Uh, if you're looking for this in TradingView, it's a part of the package I sell. It's something that Praveen was able to put together um, to help support from a fundamental perspective. I'll look at a couple more. OPRA, this is, if you could believe, a browser is an AI tool. Um, they had a big run up on that belief here. It came back to Earth. It's still a browser, historically. Um, but look at the volume coming in. Look at all these green dots out of a squeeze. 
Something's acting up on OPRA. It's worth watching. Let's see anything else that we want to talk about? I mean, of course, the old favorites, Meta. Meta is one of the strongest stocks in this market. Um, you know, these are hard to find an opportunity to get into. Um, I guess technically it's not extended. It's had great earnings. It still has earnings growth, growth greater than its multiple. Um, Amazon uh, has been moving nicely as well. Kind of getting back, you know, it, the high that I saw was in the 3800s to a 20 to 1 split, 190s. I bet it gets back to that level before too long. Um, you know, Apple, obviously a big stock that a lot of people hold, has been a laggard up here. Um, and I can't really say anything good about it, except it's obviously not extended. Maybe this is a bottoming tail, but considering the strength of the market, this is a big underperformer. And lastly, um, which one else did I want to look at? NVIDIA, one that so many people hold. And like so many other, th oh, no, not NVDD, Jeffrey, NVDA. I only wish I had more. <laughs> let's just look at NVIDIA and let's look at NVIDIA in hindsight. Forget what you know today. Here's a stock, beautiful base, cup, saucer, breakout, big volume, not extended, and then boom. But what do you do today if you own NVIDIA? I'm holding mine. It's hard for me to add to it up here. If you look at the fundamentals, the fundamentals are incredible. Um, let's just bring up NVIDIA. Next earnings are May 22nd. Um, forward PE is 132. Look at the earnings per share growth, the last three. Look at the revenue growth, surprises in each. Yeah, fundamentally, this thing probably goes a lot higher. Um, it's an expensive stock. I mean, there's actually derivatives now, so you could buy the direction without having to buy the whole stock. I think that's enough. So 37 minutes right now. What have we done? We made a call on the market. My call is simple. We're in thin air here. My guess is it goes higher still, but it won't take much to pop the balloon. Markets like to climb a wall of worry, and we've got divergences, Hindis, Bengos, Israel, Ukraine. Uh, we did kick the, 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 um, the can down another month on the budget. We got a big election and contention coming up as well. We've got inflation numbers, we got lots of Fed speakers, but the markets love to climb a wall of worry. We still have semiconductors, the AI and crypto leading. Um, you know, on the crypto space, as I talked about several times, I've been playing it with MicroStrategy, which is a holder of Bitcoin. But talk about tulip mania. Um, from 450 in January to 1079. Where would I have gotten in or where did I get in? This was where the opportunity was. Here's the launch indicators, breaking through the 50 with three dots. The same as I trade everything else. At the time, it was not 100 on extension. But how high can this go? And then lastly, the ultimate SMCI. I'm sure I'm missing the boat on these guys, but I thought these were assemblers and putting together incredibly powerful, strong computer systems. But are they actually creating the technology or are they putting them together? But look at this. And you know what it's going to do on Monday? It's going to open up close to all-time highs. It just got included in the S&P 500. Maybe that's a bubble in itself. Have an awesome, awesome, awesome week. Um, again, please click the link for the Wealth365 event. If you like these, let me know. If you don't like them, Tell me what I can do better. 
And if you have any interest in doing this live, I'll be in Orange County early June, I think 7th or 8th, whatever the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday are. Love to see you and uh, have a great week.